Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps today. We are back with Warlord Games 2080, Pat Mills creation, ABC Warriors, one of the bigger models. This is Still Horn. Still Horn was created to be the last and the greatest of the ABC Warriors. He was an indestructible robot armed with an implosion hammer, which was effectively the ultimate weapon capable of destroying a regiment with one strike. Stillhorn fulfilled his greatest promise and ended the Volgan War by killing the commander-in-chief, Marshal Volgod. After the war, Still, who had become a pacifist after seeing the carnage he had wrought, applied to become a fireman so he could save lives instead of taking them. Instead, his superiors tricked him into entering a fusion furnace where he would be melted down as he was judged too dangerous to live. So there you go. He's got a pretty epic backstory. And as you can see, I've given him a nice hard white prime because I want him to look pretty damn bright and just look beautiful with the speed paint. So we kicked things off with, I got to remember what it was, High Lord Blue. This guy has a lot of blue on him. I'm not 100% sure how this model is going to turn out. But we're going to go step by step and work this one out together. He has a lot of parts that look like muscles on his body. These all need to be blue. So that is what I'm working on to begin with. I've already picked out his pecs, as you can see. I'm going to work around his... Uh, I don't know what you call these. I don't know my muscle groups. But the abdomen, uh, anything on his leg. I don't hugely have a good photo of the Warlord Games one to reference. I find the pictures on their website is a bit hit and miss. He's also in a different pose on the website because I decided to glue mine a little bit differently. But yeah, ultimately, I'm just going to go around. I'm going to pick out the sections that make sense to me to be blue. And hopefully, he's going to look pretty cool by the end of it. Who knows? Who knows? But while we're doing this section, let's talk a bit more about Steelhorn. So he is literally indestructible, is what this uh, little reference sheet says. His strength level is enormous, which makes no sense. <laughs> and he does not like intense heat. So that is a weakness for him. And there you go. It didn't take me long. With the power of editing, I have now got all the blue parts done to a level that I like. And now I can actually see the model a bit better. When everything's white, I found this with the Gene Stealer as well. Trying to paint the model feels so much harder. I don't know why that is. You like lose the depth. I really should have just put a wash over the model. And then I would have been able to see stuff properly. Uh, actually, this paint that I'm now about to use, the Holy White by the Army Painter, would have done the job perfectly. As you can see, it's more of a grey. It's a very light grey. I'm going to put it over the shields that he wears on each of his arms because he's got these super over-the-top patriotic shields. Good old red, white, blue. And I, I hate straight-up white. Later on, I will go over the shield and uh, whiten up the whites, but I needed to get some shadow in the recesses just to make it look more realistic. Otherwise, he would just look, I don't know, a bit silly. <laughs> I'm talking about giant robots with implosion hammers, and I'm worried about them looking silly. That makes no sense. But in-game, this character has some interesting traits. I've not used him in-game, so I'm not going to go over his rules too much. But he has two sides to his card. First one is him in this form, Steelhorn, the implosion hammer wielding hero. And then the other one is known as the mess. So after he was tricked to be uh, melted down because he was deemed too dangerous to live, he actually survived as a living molten metal called the mess. And they have stats for him to be like that. Unfortunately, they do not have a model. I don't know if they're going to make a model. I really feel they should. But until they do, we'll have to uh, just deal with what we have. 
So it's interesting that you can play them in two styles. I think that could be fun. I do still have the third starter mission to get through for the ABC Warriors. Uh, obviously, that doesn't involve Stillhorn, but that is on my radar to be done as well. And I do believe the next wave of ABC Warriors should be coming out August, I want to say. Sometime in this like upcoming month. Actually, today should be August 1st when this... August 1st? August 2nd. 2nd. This video is going to be scheduled for August 2nd. So I believe halfway through this month we should be seeing some ABC Warriors. Don't hold me to that because I'm not always correct. But I think we're going to be seeing the next round of ABC Warriors because then... Hopefully that gives us a Christmas Judge Dread release. Maybe. Maybe. I hope so. I also want to see some more Slain. What about you guys? What do you want to see? I know Rogue Trooper is probably very popular. There's obviously some a lot of Judge Dread that we should still try and get through. But I would love to see some Slain come through as well. Okay, enough of me waffling. We now have... The Holy White Down. I've put it on the hammer as well. I think it looks interesting, so I've run with it. Up next is the Magic Blue. We're going to use this on the crystal on his head. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about making this look like a crystal just yet. But I do want it to be a different blue to his muscles. So as you can see as it's going down, it's slightly lighter. It's not a huge amount of detail to this crystal on his head. Um, I really don't know how I'm going to paint it. Looking at their model, it seems like they did some sort of uh, dry brushing, probably an airbrush. They create kind of starbursts effects on it, which looks nice, don't get me wrong. I just don't have that skill set to do it. So we're going to have to go... I don't know, probably going to have to dry brush it or something. Maybe just draw lightning bolts on there. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. It's uh, at this stage, I have no idea what I'm actually doing. But I am liking the model so far. After this, I think from these initial packs, I have Mechquake left. I think that's it, actually. It's just Mechquake left. So we're going to have to get him painted. Maybe he's going to be in tomorrow's poll with a few other figures. It was a close run this week. Uh, I was checking back and forth over a couple of days. Morgar was winning for a little while there. And then Tuesday hit and Stillhorn took over. And I'm kind of glad this model has sat on my shelf. The bigger ABC Warriors kind of scare me a little bit. Just because you can get more detail on them. Feels like this model took a lot longer to paint than a tiny 1980s Judge Dredd figure. So <laughs> I, I was happy to spend the time painting this, but it definitely took longer than I expected. Up next is the Grave Lord Grey, and this is going to go over everything that hasn't currently got paint on it. So the hammer, uh, his arms, his body, his head, his legs... This is going to take a while, I'm not going to lie. I've got to try and get most of the big areas done with my larger brush and then I'm going to have to cut in with the smaller brush and just neaten everything up. So as you can see, I'm trying to do his back. I'm going to use my shade brush for this section. But then once I start getting near any blue areas, I'm going to go down to a more detailed brush and be a lot cleaner. But we are going to skip forward because this does take a while. Right, and here we go. It's not fully dry yet, but I am absolutely adoring the way this looks. The Gravelord Grey is by far my favourite army painter paint. I'm still on the Mark One of these, and they're lasting me so long. But yeah, I adore the Gravelord Grey. I've used it almost on every model I've painted this year. And I think that probably says it all. <laughs> it's well worth its money. Uh, up next was the Runic Grey, which I'm going to use on the hammer. 
the apothecary uh, the holy white didn't come out the way I wanted it as it started drying. I forgot. It really goes quite light once it starts drying. So I'm going to just go over with the runic grey. Paint the flatter areas first with the paint, using it to manipulate my brush into a point, and then I can go around the slightly fancier filigreed areas of the hammer, make a bit less mess. But otherwise, I'm just slapping this down. I'm not too worried. It's a hammer. We all know hammers are for beating stuff, so if it goes a little screwy, it's fine. So there we go. Runic Grey is now down. He is, I'm really liking the look of this model. <laughs> the more, the more I'm progressing with it, I'm starting to see how things are going to come together. I really don't plan out my color schemes. I pick a color, I start doing it, I pick the next color, I then do it. I wanted the grays to dry, so I've just moved on to the blood red army paint shade. And we're going to get the red stripes done on the shields very fiddly you obviously want it to look neat and tidy but you also got to try and keep a nice sharp line <laughs> it's this is not what speed paints really were designed for they obviously can be used this way because i am using it but it's slow progress i'm just trying to take my time not slip off these raised lines i want it to look neat and tidy as best as i can it is nice that they have given us the raised lines. Because in the artwork, it's a flat shield. And they could have easily just been like, eh, your, your problem to draw these straight lines. But instead, they gave us something to actually paint. And I truly appreciate that, Warlord Games. You, you did me proud. You did me proud. With the annoying straight lines done, I also hit up the wires on the hammer and the stars. I'm not entirely sure what colour the stars would be. In the artwork, I can't even see stars on the hammer. So I'm a bit confused where they are, or what they are. I then grab the Zealot Yellow, and I'm going to do his ABC Warrior badge in that. And I think I'm going to try and pick out the discs that have the red stars on the hammer. Now, the problem I'm foreseeing is that I have not let the red dry. The red is still wet as I'm painting this yellow on. And I'm worried that when I blob it onto those discs, it may actually end up bleeding. But we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully I don't mess it up. But I think this would have been gold technically on the model. Um, I don't like using metallics. I have done some of the ABC Warriors in metallics. Uh, the Hammersteins and stuff I, I don't like it they look the models look great i'm not going to change the models in any way shape or form they are what they are now but yeah i'm just not a fan of metallics i feel like this style of painting at least they look more like the comic books they're not silly shiny they're just silly bright and comic booky <laughs> i'm definitely waffling now hang on we're gonna skip forward a bit Okay, most of the yellow is now done. I'm working my way on the hammer. As you can now see, I've got the filigree done. We're also going to go around those annoying stars. And I think we'll then move on to the third blue of the model. And that third blue is the cloudburst blue. I am using it purely on this corner of his USA inspired shield. He's got the little bird of freedom, I assume, in there as well. Which, once again, carved into the model. It's not like you have to try and freehand this bird into the model. It's already there. It's nice and secure. I want to make sure I blob this on enough that it gets a nice solid colour to it. I want to make sure the bird also stands out. I'm looking at this and I'm, I know for a fact I have to go over in white at some point. So keep that in mind when painting this model. And if you're following this step-by-step -step guide, probably should have done the white lines before the red to make my life easier because the white lines 
are dipping into the shield. They're carved into the shield. The red lines are raised up, the white dip in. So it would have made more sense to have done the white first. But as I said earlier in the video, I don't plan my paints. I just start painting and grab what I think will work for the thing that I'm focused on at that point. It doesn't always work out for me, but it usually does. So there we go. I've pretty much got the blues down. That hopefully is the last blue on this model. He looks pretty blue at the moment, but I've also just said blue way too many times in a sentence. But I'm really liking how he looks. I then grabbed the only Citadel paint I am using in this, and it was the Pallid Flesh Shade. That is pretty much my go-to white, even though it's not a white. I'm going to use that in these creases. I'm going to make the shield white. I'm just going to take my time, try and be as neat as possible, slide out of camera view so you can't fully see what I'm up to. Because, you know, this is YouTube. You are here not to watch me paint, but of course watch me talk and watch the model disappear off the camera. There's real no reason for you to actually see how I paint the model. Because you're obviously too busy hitting that like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Yeah, you're buying me a cup of coffee. You know, there's, there's more important things you do during this video than actually watch me paint. But there you go. We are pretty much through with the idea of what the shield is. So I'm just going to clean it up and I'll work on the second one as well. Now, in truly bad form, as I looked through my recording, I did not record me doing the crystal. Uh, I do apologize. <laughs> um, it looks like I pause the camera and forget to unpause it. Ultimately, I drew some white lightning down and then I heavily dry brushed it. And then with a wet brush, I smoothed out the dry brushing so it didn't look as rough. It's not a wonderful effect, but it worked ultimately. And then when I do the final actual paint for this model, you'll see, you'll actually see what it looks like. So that is the white done. This is where I pause it and forget to unpause. <laughs> and we jump straight into plasmatic bolt. So the crystal is now done to the best of my capabilities. And then I'm using the plasmatic bolt to hit up all the areas that I've left for his energy. So there's the little button on his chest. There's the interior of his hammers or his hammer head. And then I'm also going to put this over the crystal. So the white that I've just put on and made and dry brushed, I'm going to cover with the plasmatic bolt as well. This is going to give it a nice glow effect. Hopefully that's, that's the plan that's going through my head and not make it look as garish as it currently looks. The white really stands out and it looks a bit clumsy to be honest with you. So I'm hoping the wash will blend the colors together and make it look more like it's a crystal. So here we go. I'm just gonna slap it down. Changes the blue up a little bit, makes it a bit more aqua. The whites take on the color as well. And it's not going to look as over the top garish as it was. So that's the last stage. We're going to do the glamour shots next. If you've stuck around this entire time, I think I deserve a like, a follow. Say hi in the comments. Drop me a robot in there as well. Let me know what you think of him. I'm interested to know. Obviously, this was all speed paints apart from that one Citadel paint. I'm rather happy with the end result. So cheers for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Boo boy.